Hello there and welcome back to another video. What I'm going to do today is try, if I can, to duplicate that disc. Now this is an original disc, as you can see, by, published by uh, Gremlin. Uh, it was made by System 3, Mark Kale and the guys. Uh, it obviously has copy protection on there. But what we're going to do is we're going to write it to this disc and see if it works. First thing I'm going to do, I've already saved the disc, I don't want to show you that because it takes too long. I'm going to wipe the disc and see if we can save the stream onto it and then try to uh, try to write it to that floppy disk and see if it works. And then I'm going to try and do it with X copy. So we'll copy the same thing again and see if Xcopy can do what the Cryoflux tries to do or vice versa which one will come out on top it's pretty obvious it's going to be the Cryoflux but uh, just for the sake of a bit of fun we'll have a comparison so as you can see it's wiping the disk thoroughly before it starts I usually leave it on auto uh, but for the sake of this little test let's do it properly So as you can see it's doing uh, sectors one by one. I presume all that means is it's formatting the disk thoroughly, I suspect. It's very exciting, isn't it? Now the cryoflux apparently works by uh, varying the speed and power of the disk of the disk write operation to allow for having all these funky formats. Um, obviously it's not uh, Amiga DOS or anybody could copy the disk. So what uh, games companies used to do is they would make their own custom loaders, their own custom disk access software and that's why you could never copy them. You'd stick the disk in the Amiga and it'd come up uh, NDOS because the Amiga didn't know what it was, obviously. So it's almost finished wiping. There we go, we're now writing a raw stream, which I just saved a few minutes ago. It doesn't look any different to what it's doing now, to be honest. But it just copies the information from the original disk, saves it on the hard drive of the computer and uh, now it's writing back the raw stream from that folder. Now obviously if you had an ADF of this you wouldn't need to do it but the chances are, well I know, that an ADF will be um, a cracked version of the game. And What I want to try and do is copy an original and see if it works. I suspect it will. Okay, almost done. Track 71, 72. So we're getting there slowly. Obviously, track 79 is the last one it needs. So let's uh, let's see if it works. So just for the sake of this video, I'll leave it recording the uh, the LCD. So this is the floppy disk we're going to try. So let's stick it in the Amiga. Let's see what happens. Which is a noisy old thing, but that's exactly what the original sounds like. So 
So there we go. That's an exact copy of an exact copy of the disc. Obviously, it's not a cracked version. That is the cop. That is the um, that is the disc I've just burnt, which is a copy of that one. So flipping great. Obviously, it works a treat. Just trying to access the disc. Hang on, I think put the disc back in. It's a long old job. There we go. Jab bots to free them. Take bots up to the saucer. Well, that obviously works, so that's okay. So what I'm going to try and do in the next video is I'm going to try and use X copy to do the same. And we'll see if it works. So I'll do this one. Thank you very much. So as you can see, we've got X copy professional on which I think is one of the last releases in English anyway I think German had a different release so we're going to try Silly Putty and see if we can uh, see if we remember how to do it no destination my god it's been a long time There you go, instantly a read error on DFO track one, or track zero rather. So that's how they stopped the uh, disc being copied. The cryo flux will bypass that and make the disc appear to the computer as an original. The rest of the data is copied fine. 